Hey guys, we've been shredding the park, the pistes and the powder here in Locks to try out these three skis. My goal of this review is not to say which ski is the best, because I can't say that. The best ski for me is not the same as for you. But to explain the characteristics and how it feels. And maybe that resonates with you and that's perhaps the ski you may like. So let's get started. Turning on the Vishnu Wide. It's a pretty chill time cruising down a slope, but it has a really long rocker and it's, the flex is pretty soft. So the ski doesn't want to go too fast, but the radius is a whole 23 and a half meters, making me have to ski pretty fast to have a good time. Skiing straight down a slope, they feel a little bit nervous, like skis often do with a long rocker. And you sort of want to put them quite a lot on edge to have a good time. Skiing these bad boys in powder was a surprisingly fun time. Uh, I put the bindings true center on the ski, because that's what the guys at Vishnu recommended me to do, and they were still floating, and I was having a rather good time in the powder. I was buttering and going switch was a pretty easy time. J skis the vacation. This is a pretty cool ski, I'd say. It's interesting. Check this out. How do you think a ski that soft turns? Actually, pretty well, as long as you're not skiing too fast. Skiing down a red slope is quite a fun time. It feels responsive from edge to edge, but as soon as you go faster and it gets ice, it feels a bit nervous. So this ski is basically for beginners or somewhat advanced skiers that don't really care if they're a bit flimsy. But skiing them in powder, Ah, that wasn't such a good time. They felt rather nervous and yeah, I didn't like it so much. They didn't feel so responsive and the incredibly soft tail made me feel really unstable. So, here we have the Atomic Ben Shetler 100. This has been my daily driver this season, so I've skied this one the most. I don't know it a little bit better. Uh, this ski's turning ability is good. It's a rather stiff ski and it has a 19 and a half meter radius, which is not big, not small. Uh, I'd like it to be even smaller actually, because you have to go pretty fast with these skis to have a good time carving. And then they are great fun. They are nimble from edge to edge and they are really holding on to ice for dear life. It's, maybe that doesn't sound right, but they are, yeah, they're carving down anything basically but you want to go pretty fast on them. And for a beginner, maybe it's not the ideal ski, but if you're an intermediate to advanced skier, you'll have a good time shredding down the piece on them. Skiing booty powder on these skis are a good time. They feel steady, reliable, and yeah, they don't have a tendency to sink really, despite being one of the more narrow skis of these three. Butterability, I think it's my own made up term for how fun a ski is to play around doing butters on. And this ski, thanks to its long, long rocker and the flex pattern is really gradual. There's no like hinge point or anything like that. Making buttering on this ski a really good time. It's easy, I feel rather balanced. And on top of that, manuals is a breeze. It's really quite easy to do in this one. So I like the butterability a lot on this guy. Butterability on the vacation is wow. The first thing I did when skiing it, I just went into a long manual. I was like, whoa, this is such a fun time. <laughs> what is that, man? Um, <laughs> just butting away, and it's really similar to the line blend in the softness, like it's really soft. Must be one of the softest skis in the market. But the difference from the line blend is that the flex pattern is really long, just gets gradually softer all the way. While the blend had a bit of a hinge point that made it hard to butter. So this one is actually easier to butter on than the blend. I'd recommend this one to a lot of beginners who, or, or beginner to intermediate skiers who really want to get into that playful style of skiing. Great. The 
compatibility of the Bench at 100. It's, um, how should I explain this experience? First of all, this ski is significantly stiffer than the other two. And this is not to say they're stiff. Compared to, let's say, a competition slope style ski, think of whichever really, they are softer than that. It's quite similar to the Candid 2 from Faction, if you've tried that ski actually. The flex is nice and gradual. It's got a nice little rocker in the front, like it's not too stiff or anything. So this ski is definitely my favorite, but um, over like jumps rollers, where I do like no spot the fives and that kind of stuff, because they just give you that little extra stiffness. Also manualing on these guys are pretty good time, but if you are lightweight and not such a strong skier, it could be a little bit too stiff for you to do these sort of tricks. The pop and rebound on the Vishnu is, you know, it's a soft ski, meaning like the stiffness of the ski is directly related to the pop and rebound you're going to get from it when you're popping off a butter or a, an ollie. So it gives you some back. I, it's quite an enjoyable experience. Ooh, pop and rebound. As it's related to the stiffness, this one has almost nothing. Gives nothing back. So if you're doing a big butter over a roller, you know, it's hardly going to help you up. So you really got to cork that butter. Doing a small ollie for a beginner, it's going to be really easy to do because of that seriously soft nose and tail. The pop and rebound of this ski, since it's the stiffest one, it also has the best pop or rebound from it. So if you're ollieing or buttery, it really does bounce off the nose or tails in a nice way. So the stability on the Vishnu is pretty, like it's decent. If you do like medium sized jumps, throwing some nice 540s, 720s, like they're gonna save you on a nose or tail heavy landing on those tricks. But I wouldn't wanna throw any new double corks on these flexi bananas. But I think the person buying this ski wants to do like a 540 to butter out, revert, new wave kind of landing anyway, so it's fine for them. Skiing switch into jumps in this bad boys feels rather unstable because of the long rock. Uh, I, I don't know, I wouldn't love hitting jumps to switch too much on them, but that's what it is. The stability of this ski is on the landings non-existent. So if you land a wee bit nose heavy or tail heavy, you're going to skid out, butter out and probably have a little bit of a crash. Unless you are possibly short and lightweight, you know, then it's gonna appear a bit stiffer to you. But me who's 78 kilos and a pretty strong skier, I was really flexing the crap out of them. So know that, that you maybe don't wanna do too much 720s, etc. on them. Unless you're an expert skier that just lands perfect. The stability on the Bench Hetler 100 is pretty great since it's much stiffer than the other two. But as mentioned, not too stiff. So I could definitely do my most difficult tricks on these skis and feel pretty safe. And also uh, when you land switch and continue skiing switch on these, they feel rather nimble and easy to ski. And this is surprising since it's such a directional ski in a sense where it has a so-called 20% uh, rocker in the front and only 10% in the back, but feels like any other, like all mountain twin tip ski. They're good. So, this ski's conclusions and who it may be for. The person may enjoy this, probably enjoys a chill out afternoon listening to trap music and wearing scarves and Adidas tracksuits. Skiing along, doing a lot of hand drags, new wavy, swervy kind of things and they probably made a perfect ski for this type of skier. But for me, I don't think I would ski this one so much. It doesn't perform well enough on piste for my taste. But of a small backcountry booter, I'd maybe love it. So that's the Vishnu Wide. Conclusions and who this ski is for. Generally, it was fun turning on this ski, powder not so much. They are incredibly buttery and playful and they feel relaxed skiing switch. So I see two kinds of people that may enjoy this ski. The first person could be a beginner to intermediate skier, 
It's doing 360s, maybe 540s and not so big jumps. Maybe it's living in the small mountains of Sweden or America's east coast. And the second person that may enjoy the ski is like an expert skier that just lands perfect and wants to do the next level manuals, butters, playful new wave kind of tricks. Conclusions and who should ski this Vincetla 100? First of all, the ski skis really well on piste, off piste, and in crud. It's stable, but not too stiff and boring. I really like that about it. So, who should ski it then? So, if you're a person that sees a all mountain ski as a ski that can ski piste, park, and powder, this is a really good alternative because it does everything really well. But you should be a rather strong skier to really handle it and make the most out of it. Another group that could enjoy this ski are the people that tend to buy the fully directional all mountain skis that are basically just a wider, not a park ski, but a wider carving ski. These skis are, in my opinion, not an all mountain ski at all because it's basically a carving and yeah, shallow powder ski and they have nothing to do in the park, thus not an old mountain ski, it's just two thirds of the mountain. So for the people that has that but want to get a little playful, this could be a good ski. Like everything I ever do on this channel, I do it out of frustration. That I see people crash, trying tricks they're not ready for or having not enough knowledge. That's why I started trying to give you as good knowledge as possible. And so I try with these ski reviews as well. I'd like you to know that Atomic, they did sponsor my 10 freestyle, free ride and how to ski videos this year. But it has nothing to do with this review. Here I really want to describe the characteristics and who may enjoy the ski. Let us know in the comments below what characteristics of skis do you like? And we may adopt this concept of video for a later one. In the meantime, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.